was. It was all of a sudden. Uh, so something commissioned today by the CIA might be a little more cynical. If it were me, I would create a, a giant shifty-looking bronze mole with a file folder in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, and, and I, they probably would like show me the door. Yeah. Yeah, they'd look at your concept, and you'd go into a deep dark room <laughs> in the bottom and never come out. Yeah, I'd go to our waiting room. Yeah, I'd stay there for about five years. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jim Sandberg created something more serious, uh, and like I said, he uh, the public got good bang for its buck with this one, and it's got, kept a lot of cryptography nerds busy, and a lot of people are still racking their brains over it, and I mean a lot of people, some very smart people, and of course journalists have managed to get lots of good news stories out of it over the years, so it's been a win all the way around, I think. Uh, and it's still unsolved, or at least part of it is. So can you, I mean, I know what Kryptos looks like. Uh-huh. You, we all in this room, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of people probably don't, so... Yeah, if, if you're not near a browser and you can't do it, you know, bring you're up a driving, picture of it. Yeah, if you're driving, apparently there's lots of people yeah. who drive and listen. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. it all the time, yeah. Yeah, so if you're driving, just close your eyes and try to bring this... <laughs> 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 don't listen to Joe. Please, Please don't. open your eyes. I mean, immediately. listen to Joe, but don't close your eyes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. If, if there's no rest area nearby, keep your eyes open. Uh, so let me describe it here. If you're standing, and most of the pictures that are, ta are taken from one side of it, and that's a side where you can look at the writing and it's correct. It's a bunch of read characters. from left to right. Yeah. It's a bunch mm -hmm. of yeah. And so that and that uh, when you're looking at it from that side, there is a, a a large petrified log standing upright on its end, on one end, on the right side. That's the what eight ten feet tall something like that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's pretty good size yeah nice 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 log i wouldn't mind having that log yeah and then uh, there's a, a tall copper plate that sort of scrolls out like a sheet of paper as if it were like like a scroll and you know? we should i want to point out it's real copper so it's actually green now exactly yeah Just, you know yeah and so it, everybody knows yeah so yeah don't 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 go to google and look at the picture and say they lied to me yeah no it it's is green. it is really copper mm -hmm. but and it scrolls out like so if you're standing at this side it scrolls away from you and then it goes in a semicircle back towards you and then it curves away around the other way so it's, it scrolls around and away from you again on the one side facing towards you it's just uh marble you know, like a, it's just like a marble marble ground there and on mm -hmm. the other side of it uh, of the semicircle loop whatever there's a little round pool in the, in the arc of the S-shape that the copper in the, yeah, makes. Yeah, in the arc mm -hmm. of the copper, yeah. The, yeah, the so tail in the bottom Yeah, end so that's, that actually is kind of like the other end of the scroll that, that it's wrapping around, if right. you can imagine that. And uh, and it it was obvious to me the first time I looked at it that uh, the, symb the symbolism, it symbolizes, I think, uh, the division of our world into smoking and non-smoking areas. <laughs> because, and, uh, and really, when you think about it, it makes sense. Because when you're standing on, on the right side, which is the part that doesn't have the pool in it, you can actually stand inside the sculpture. But if you go on the other side, the smoking side, you can't stand inside it. You have to stand outside, just mm. like smokers do. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and, it's and a good the, theory, Joe. And the little, the little pool in the center makes a great place to throw your butts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is so, not what it's intended for. Pretty uh, sure it is. I, I, I like it. Um, yeah, let's, let's get back to our more description. Um, there are letters cut into this copper sheet, about uh, 1,700 or so letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're, they're actually, like uh, some people said, stamped out. I don't know if they were cut out with a torch or stamped or what, but they go all the way through. So they're not just. They stamped. were probably, yeah. uh, knowing the time that it was made, it was probably done with like a water jet or something like that. Uh huh. Whereas you know, today some kind of computer controlled device yeah. to be able to yeah. cut them it's with the precision consistent. that they are done. Yeah, yeah. and uh, today it would probably be a laser. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Laser. Laser. Yeah. Yeah, you're mispronouncing that word, Joe. G. I'm, I'm sorry. The Z a laser. is laser. Laser. Okay. Uh, of course, you can find drawings of the text part of the sculpture online. And I'll describe that real briefly. It's shaped like a rectangle, which is divided into four smaller rectangles. The two right rectangles show the English alphabet, that's A through, C, A through Z, repeated over and over again with the word cryptos inserted into the text, which is a big hint because that actually turns out to be one of the keys for the encryption cipher of the first two messages. Because this whole thing is one giant cipher. We haven't said that yeah. yet. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, whole, the whole sculpture is... A, a giant message. Cipher. Well, yeah, the left half is is the message, and the right half is the key. Okay. Mm. So, the, yeah, the two rectangles on the left-hand side. The top, okay, so the, the top half of, or either the upper left-hand rectangle is encoded with what's called a visionaire cipher, uh, which is named after a French cryptographer called Blaise de Visionaire. Uh, he was a 16th century dude, and actually... 
he apparently did not invent this this method. It was invented by some guy named uh, what was his name, uh, Giovanni Battista Beloso, uh, who invented it also in the 16th century, and then and then Visionaire modified it several decades later, and then sooner centuries after that, it was misattributed to him, but actually he didn't really invent the concept. So it's kind of like the light bulb? Yeah, kind of mm-hmm. like that, yeah. Um, but uh, we don't care. It's, it's called the Visionaire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and here's a quick, let me give you a real quick down, a rundown of how it works. And now you, everybody knows what a Caesar cipher is, right? No. You don't know what a Caesar cipher is? I mean, I do, one, but not Caesar everybody Caesar shift. Does. Okay, okay. Yeah, Caesar shift is one where it's the, the, e- the easiest and dumbest cipher out there, one where you basically pick a key. The key might be, say, let's say your key is one. If, you're, if I were to say, and you're going to shift everything over one, and, of course, if your key is three, you shift everything over three in the alphabet. But mm. let's say it's one. So I'm encrypting, say, Devon. So Devon, D-E-V-I-N, becomes E-F-W-J-O. Okay. Right? Okay, yeah. that's it. Well, see, and easy. so, but those are ridiculously easy to break. And so the, the Visionaire cipher is in its simplest form, like a, like a Caesar shift, but you pick a key. Pick a, let's pick a word like, say, bacon, and that we make that our key. And so we shift uh, the first character by two because, you know, B is two. And then the next one is A, so we shift the next one by, by one. Mm. The next one is C, so we shift the next one after that by, by three, which is for C, and on and on. And then we start it over again, shifting from two, one, three, blah, blah, and then shift over two, one, three. And, uh, and it, but, of course, again, that leaves a big pattern. And then... But that's in its simplest form. That's a visionaire cipher. Now, what they did here is is a little craftier one. This is one where, to do this one, here's what you do: you sit down and write down the whole alphabet A through Z. And in this one, they use the word cryptos for the for the first key, for the top key. So write the word cryptos to the left of your alphabet, and then go through your alphabet and take out every letter that's in the word cryptos. So starting with K. So you'll notice that if you go through the alphabet, those letters are missing. And then, so that's it. Cryptos, A to Z, missing those letters. What you do is you're, you're going to repeat this alphabet underneath that as many times as the length of your key. So the first key, the first part of the message is the key palimpsest, uh, which is 10 characters, so 10 rows. But what you do is uh, the first row starts at P. So that's how they're all shifted around. So palimpsest, P. So it starts with the P in cryptos and goes all the way through. And at the end, K-R-Y from cryptos is, is identical to the end of it. The next one is A. So it just starts right at A and then cryptos. Next one is L. So it starts L through Z. And then it says cryptos and then A through J. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question that I think I know the answer to, but I want to make sure. So you said the key to this is cryptos, but palin... Palimpsest is the second key. Oh, so it's a two-key cipher. Yeah. Okay, that's the part you didn't say, and I was making sure that I wasn't missing. Okay. Yeah, and so essentially what you do is, is uh, let's say I want to encrypt... Uh, no, we don't want to encrypt Devin. That's too many letters. We'll encrypt Joe. I like that one. <laughs> so, yeah, so just uh, so the first the first line in this one, uh, J is N, and then you, get, you, kept, you, go, you, you go to the top line, you pick out your letters, and then go down... So the first one is the first line, J. Uh, second letter, O, is the second line. So I go to O, and that goes down to the second row, which is F. And then, and this is going to be incomprehensible to you people who are just listening, then I go over to the E, and I go down to the third line, and that is Y. So that is how, yeah. my, that, so that is how my name is encrypted. And then, yeah, and then what I do is when I, when I want to decrypt the message, I come back through, and this since this is a... a and I know that since I'm decrypting it, and, and I'm not a cryptographer, I'm actually the intended recipient, I know the two keys. Mm. That's the beauty of this system is that since you know, it's easy to remember two words. Yeah. And so the guy that's, that gets this message, he doesn't have to carry a code book around him. He can, just, he can just sit down and write the whole thing out because he knows those keys. And then when he's done deciphering the message, he can just burn, he can just burn his key mm-hmm. that he's created. And so... For everybody listening, I know that this can be kind of tough to, to understand. There's a great book out there, and Joe, help me with this. Was it the Code Book? Yes. Yeah. Is that the is that the actual title of it? Yeah, it was called the Code Book, and I can't remember who wrote it. Who was I can't. It? We talked about it about yeah, three did. years ago when we did we the did. last Cipher episode. 
it is the code book is a great book to at least go through he does a much better job of making this kind of stuff palatable to the layman mm -hmm. and that would be a book i'd recommend to to look through yeah that's a, it, it really is kind of hard to make this totally understandable when you because it's a very visual thing i mean mm -hmm. i've got this i've got this table right in front of me and it's very easy for me you guys would have it too so. i have it in front of me and it's not easy i for was me. gonna say yeah. i have it in front of me and i do not understand it at all but the good news is i don't try to decipher messages like this <laughs> yeah no, but and and but here's the here's the the beauty part of it. So now we know that my name as encrypted here is uh, is N F Y, right? N F Y. So I go back and I, I and I do my name I do my name out. I go to the first line, and I go over to the N, and then I go up to the and then and that's not the first line, but the first line, the top line is the, the, the decryption line. So it actually be the second line, but it's the first keyed line. So. And I've, have I confused you yet? You better have. But uh, <laughs> I go over to the end, and then I go up to the top line, and yep, there's a J. Then I go down for the second letter. I go down to the second line down here, and I go to the F, and I go up to the top line. Whoop, it says O. And then I go down to the third line, and I go over to the Y, whoop, and go up to the first line, and there it is, an E. And so I know my message says Joe. Huh. So that's See, how you decrypt I don't. That. I don't know why he bothers to put things in code to us when he writes emails, because I know that if I spend the time to decode it, it just says, Joe is awesome, over and yeah. over uh -huh. and over. I know, that's, that's all In it different is. kinds of ciphers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, so, okay, that's so, so that's how the first, the that, first that's cipher... That's how the first, the first cipher... That, and there was, and yeah. sorry, d how... <laughs> how do we know that? Decrypt? Yeah. How what? How do we know that? How do we know that that's what it is? Well, actually, because yeah. people, some people broke the cipher. The first one? Yeah, they did. Okay. And actually, there were two. There were two. Um, there, there were two messages, and so two different ciphers. I mean, they were both vis visionaire ciphers, but with different keys. Okay. And so that whole part of it, and then, uh, and then it gets a little trickier when you get to the, the second rectangle down, the lower left, and but the top part of the message is two messages. As I said, the first one is says between.